Um, you know, same as always, I feel like, uh, you know, go out and fight for victory, you know, prepare this week hard, and, um, you know, looking forward to playing a, a quality team like Texas and m Bowl game, is that something you all, you know, every the best place you can go to is fine? Is that Absolutely. You know, anytime you get a chance to go to a bowl game, it's just a... Uh, it's fun, you know, to be with your team. You get to, you know, go out for a week and just, you know, bond with them. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to playing in, you know, whatever bowl game may come. Uh, still trying to, you know, attain a 10-win ten, ten season. So there's a lot of things we're still fighting for. Odell, they, they struggle against the pass. I mean, their numbers are, are pretty bad. You guys look at that exciting? You guys look at that stuff and, and get pumped up that you can do some damage? Um, absolutely. You know, um, I think that coach last year, you know, talked about our receivers and said, you know, that, you know, we weren't all that and, and this and that. And, um, you know, it kind of lit a fire under our, our belts, you know. And, uh, you know, I talked to Jarvis, and I think he said he remembers that. But, um, you know, we're just looking out to go out and, you know, hopefully we attack them in the air. Have you heard yet you're a finalist for the Blitnikoff? Uh, I just saw it today. I just saw it today. Um, a finalist, excuse me. Um, I don't know, you know, if you make it to the finals or, or whatnot, but, um, you know, it's a huge, huge accomplishment, a huge um Huge honor to just be named with those other guys. Do you imagine after heading into this season, after your numbers from last year, this that would be the case? Uh, it's it's just crazy. You know, we got into a little bit more of a uh, you know passing style offense, and um, you know it just allowed for you know, bigger plays, you know, throughout the air to come. And um, you know, like I said, it's just it's just an honor to even be in in the names with those guys. I just talked to Trayvon about what's the difference in you this year. He said you've been happier. Were there some rough times at la last year? Absolutely, it, and it wasn't even just after games. It was just, you know, just not being able to feel like you can't, you can't help your team. You know, you don't get the ball as much. You can't, you can't do this and that for your team. And it was just, it, it wasn't as fun as it was this year to just, you know, to have the relationship that you know me and Jarvis have now, and, and just be able to, you know, go out on the field. And it's like a little kid again. It's like you can go out there and have fun, and it, it's a huge difference. When you think like that, does a game like this excite you? Because obviously A&M wants to get involved in a shootout. If, if you end up both getting involved in a high-scoring game, you're going to be relied on a lot. Um, absolutely. You know, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me if we went into a shootout and, you know, uh, we had Zach Thorne for 500, 600 yards. Um, I, I don't think I'd mind at all. What is his demeanor? I mean, he, he seemed to hit a low point, obviously, at Bama and he came away with a sprained ankle and all that. But what have you seen the past 10 days or so from um, him? This last week of practice, I've just seen him just smiling, you know, just just relaxed, just, um, you know, he still works just as hard as he always has been. I think I think he's just, you know, moved on past it, and we're just looking at Texas and m now. What's it been like in the locker room for this team this year in the unity maybe compared to years past? Um, there was times where, you know, uh, unity council and those older guys had to step up and really, you know, really let these younger guys know that this isn't this isn't a game anymore. This is serious. I think it was definitely after the Georgia game was one of them just – you know, because we feel as if, you know, we shouldn't have lost to, you know, even though Georgia's a great team, we feel as if we shouldn't have lost to them or, you know, Ole Miss or any of those guys. Um, it's just, you know, the way we carry ourselves around here is we don't we don't really take kindly to, you know, losing. Uh, but, you know, we've had some guys step up and, and be great leaders for us. Do you think Zach looks at the game as Zach versus Johnny kind of thing? Does, does he feel like he might have to out, outdo him? No, I don't. I don't think he looks at it like that. But um, you know, you're going up against you know possibly the back-to-back -back Heisman Trophy winner. You know, he's he's a great quarterback. Um, does a great job at moving around and, and finding guys open down the field. I think I think Zach's just looking at it as you know, let's play his best game. Can you tell us about your week as Johnny Manziel last week. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. You know, just be running around, um, kind of like back in high school, and you're running around throwing the ball around and um. You know, actually, quarterback isn't you know isn't all that bad. <laughs> <laughs> what would you uh, what would you give to be able to throw a pass in the game? Coach oh, Miles said he was thinking about. I don't know. If I would too seriously. I would I would love to throw a pass in the game. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'd either throw it or, or run it, but I know that you know I I'd do my best to make a play. Going back to your numbers this year, what would they look like if Jarvis wasn't on the other side? They probably wouldn't be the same, you know. Uh, and I feel it's the same way for him. It's just we. You know, we complement each other so much that, you know, even being double teamed a lot this year, um, you can't do it because you got him on the other side. It's like you're gonna leave him single. I mean, I don't know too many people that can guard him in this nation. And um, you know, it's the same same with him. You leave him double and you put one guy on me. It's just, you know, it's gonna be hard to stop both of us. What kind of mindset do you have to beat Johnny Manziel? When you take over the role, Johnny Manziel, what do you <laughs> what do you think of? What goes through your head? Um, just make make incredible plays. Um, it's just crazy watching him. You know, watching him make the plays that he makes, it's just, you just sit back and you really just, you just say, wow, like, 
he really rolled out all the way left, rolled all the way right, came back and threw it across his body. It's just like you don't you don't see too many guys with the ability to make those plays. So that's what you did last week? You got to the tour team? I did a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Did you, did you actually watch film of, yeah. of Johnny and and try to mimic some of the stuff he does? Is that yeah. I watched them. Uh, it was a few games. I think it was it was the last team they played. It was one he, he, he does this little move where he'll fake running right, step back and roll back left. And he did it like twice on one of the D linemen and just made the D linemen fall. And, um, you know, I tried to mimic some of his moves this weekend. I, um, I watched a lot of film on him. I was, I was kind of excited for those periods. How much structure do you really need in a playbook if you could just play like that? You don't need a whole lot. Just I think as a receiver for him, it, it's going to be, um, you know, as a matter of fact, just getting open because he's going to find you. He does a great job of finding guys, you know, after plays and, and keeping the plays alive. So, you know, um, it's, it's going to be a challenge for our defense. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it.